This video shows you how Jordan Pools leveled up in 2021-22. Pools coming off a game in the Motor City where he carried the Golden State Warriors without Stephen Curry and Draymond Green, he's had seven 20 plus point games with still 80% of the season remaining. You're about to see how Jordan took over without the soon to be three time MVP and a full breakdown on how JP's game has taken the next step. Stick around to see if Poole can win the most improved player of the year award. Only 22.7% of you watching right now are subscribed, so help the channel reach 50K by subscribing if you haven't already. Also leave a thumbs up on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. The scary part about Poole's current play is that he still has a lot of improving to go. He's been inconsistent at times in the early going because this is the first time in his NBA career that he's been trusted as a main scoring option. It's also the first stretch of games where he's consistently been a starter throughout his young three-year pro career. Shooting a below average 28.6% from three-point range on nearly eight attempts per night entering the game against the Pistons, Poole found his shooting groove, showing off the Curry-esque smooth deep range stroke that was a consistent weapon for him during his breakout preseason. He'd been struggling to keep that jumper consistent, but in Motown against 2021's number one pick, Cade Cunningham, the Warriors' number 28 pick back in 2018 came out firing on all cylinders. In only the first half against Detroit, Jordan Poole had 22 points on 9 for 13 shooting from the fields and 4 for 6 shooting from three-point range. The microwave finished with a game-high 32, and he was also a game-high plus 18. The main priority for opposing coach Dwayne Casey was to lock up Poole without Draymond and Steph, but the kid didn't let that stop him from pulling up in the face of various Piston defenders. While Jordan's smooth shooting stroke was noteworthy, there's a long way to go until he's an elite shooter. Considering the next facet to his offensive repertoire that you're about to see, when Poole's hitting his deep range shots, it's over for opposing defenses. Opponents can only pray that the pool's less wet than usual when going up against the dubs. Most impressively for Poole in the win over Detroit without Draymond and Curry were his blistering attacks to the basket and finishes at the rim. Jordan displayed a nice mix of moves at the point of attack, allowing him to blow past his matchup to get downhill. When he was working without the rock, Poole's off-ball awareness allowed him to find open cutting lanes. Jordan's finishing is extremely polished in compared to past years, and this is a man that's clearly putting in endless reps attempting contested layups. Jordan's greatly vamped his attempts around the basket this year. This acrobatic reverse layup in traffic is something the college or rookie version of Poole simply wouldn't be able to do. It's been amazing to see how the balance and touch on his finishing around the bucket has progressed from average to elite. Compared to his first two seasons, 15.7% in 2019-20 and 19% in 2021, he's upped his rim frequency this season to 26%, a 10 percentage point increase from his rookie year. What's been even more incredible has been the efficiency of Jordan's attempts at the rim. Man's converting an elite 73% of his attempts at the bucket which puts him in the 92nd percentile. You're not gonna believe this, but he made just 48% of those shots during his rookie season. Coach Steve Kerr has witnessed the development of Poole firsthand, and he had this to say on the man's drastic improvement. I think he's physically stronger. I think he's just able to absorb more contact. He's just got more confidence. You think about his first year two years ago, if he had a clear lane to the rim, he could dunk the ball but it looks like he's getting up six inches higher now. He's just athletically much improved from two years ago. That extra power and bounce is really paying off at the rim." End quote. Jordan's performance in Motown was clutch, given the dubs were completely short-handed, and it's those kind of outings which showcase how this 22-year-old's kid is wise beyond his years. Jordan's always been an exceptional ball handler for his size since his days at the University of Michigan. As JP's gained pro experience, his shooting off pull-ups, cutting off the ball and popping out for threes, and his spot-up shots from deep range have become far more polished. As I mentioned, the consistency hasn't really been there, and he has some ugly attempts from time to time, but Poole's comfortability and confidence to take these attempts from distance has reached a new level. 
In the state of his alma mater, Poole was looking like the six foot five version of Steph Curry, and he put the dubs on his back not only without Steph, but without the first team all defender and former DPOY Dre. Poole was draining shots from the logo, he was using his speed, long strides mixed with his acrobatic finishing to get whatever he wanted. Poole's also made some major improvements on the other end, as he's currently leading all shooting guards in defensive rating. Poole's wingspan stretches out to a solid 6 foot 7 feet, and he's averaging 1.3 steals per game. It's really hard to score on Jordan because of his mix of length, perception, and quickness. He can extend his arms to swiftly contest perimeter shots, and the muscle that Poole's added allows him to avoid getting bodied like he did at times in past years. But the best part about Poole's ability to lock up his matchup is how he can scope out the passing lanes and also how he can read when an attacking player is about to let it fly. His instincts on whether to contest or stay back are pristine. As you can see on both ends of the floor, Poole's annually made drastic improvements and he's leveled up into a near all-star caliber talent in 2021-22. He definitely is in the conversation with John Morant, Miles Bridges, and Tyler Harrow for the MIP award, but Poole needs to increase his consistency to really compete for the most improved player. Curry, along with Wiggins, who had to be the second scoring option last year, and eventually Clay, when he returns, are going to highly benefit off this progression from Poole, but I want to know your take. Why is Jordan Poole's development so crucial? Best answer in the comments gets next video shoutout. Two shoutouts today from my last two videos go to Was X Zacher and Ona Ebodaga. The top three commenters with the most shoutouts by the 25th of December are going to receive NBA merchandise in the holiday season, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. This was D Flow, and I'll see you next video.